What's up, Serial Heads? Today's episode's a little bit of a departure from the normal Serial Time videos, but I hope you'll like it. See, a couple weeks ago, I was in Minneapolis to see a Minnesota Timberwolves game with a friend of mine. And Minnesota is the home to lots of wonderful and cool things, like the Mall of America, Prince, Rhyme Sayer Records, the Coen Brothers, and it was the original home of the Lakers. Well, that's not a good thing, but whatever. Anyway, the biggest and coolest draw for me is that Minnesota is home to one of the best cereal companies of all time, General Mills. Now, it's always kind of been a dream of mine to visit General Mills and see where all the magic happens. And on this past trip to Minnesota, I was lucky enough to get that opportunity. Now, I only got to see the archives, but that's kind of all I wanted to see anyway. There was a very kind and generous person at General Mills named Kevin Hunt who agreed to show me around while I was there. So here you go. Here's a video of my tour of the General Mills archives. So when I arrived, I had to sign in and get this cool General Mills badge before heading upstairs to the archives. One of the first things you see when you get upstairs is a wall walking you through the history of the company. This was really cool. They go decade by decade explaining how General Mills came to be with pictures of the old mills, the important products, and important people that were part of the story along the way. Outside of the archives, there's this bulletin board displaying pictures of the recent acquisitions. They told me that in addition to stuff they've saved internally, a lot of the stuff in the archives comes from collectors as well who donate packaging and art and pictures, etc. So then I went to the archive office and there's this really cool display case up against the back wall. You can see on the top shelf here they have a handful of cereal boxes on display. Kaboom, Trix, Team Cheerios, Pac-Man, Honey Nut Checks, Triples, Dunkle Balls, a bunch of Weedy boxes, and, and many more. They had this little setup of old Cheerio boxes along with this frontier town that used to be able to punch out of the back of the boxes and then fold together. They had some plush dolls of General Mills characters, which I have and you might recognize from the background of some of my videos, as well as the Pillsbury Doughboy here. I had to remind myself that General Mills is more than just a cereal company. They have plenty of non-cereal products in this case as well, like bugles, squeezits, and different kinds of fruit snacks. Now after the display case, I went back into the actual archive area, which is a climate controlled room with rows of shelves where they store all their packaging, print ads, and anything else that falls under the archive umbrella. For example, here are some old paintings of alternate versions of Betty Crocker. And they have an entire shelf dedicated to old Betty Crocker cookbooks. It's quite a collection. I'm sure if there's a recipe you're looking for, it can be found in one of these cookbooks. Now one of the things I didn't realize is that back in the day, General Mills had its hands in a little bit of everything. They owned Parker Brothers and Kenner, so they had a collection of board games and other things you might not expect in the archive. Oh, and this was a cool little find I spotted on the shelves. These fruit snacks from the 90s. I barely remember Surf's Up, but so delicious, those were my jam. I love those things. But enough of the other stuff, I was there for the cereal. Two of the archivists, Jessica and Katie, were kind enough to pull a bunch of stuff for me to look at before I arrived. Here are some sketches and original drawings of some cereal mascots, including Busby from Honey Nut Cheerios, HT the robot from Hidden Treasures, and of course the rabbit from Trix. They also pulled some prizes and premiums for me to look at. You can see a Trix water bottle there, a Barbie premium, a puzzle from Body Buddy cereal, a baseball from Chex. There are some spoons from Trick Cereal, a few packs of card games with Big G characters on them, then this binder thing from Cinnamon Toast Crunch with the three original bakers on it. There's a speaker built in on this thing, but I'm not sure if it played music. Here's some sunglasses from S'mores Crunch. I would totally rock those today. Some stickers or rub-ons from Pac-Man Cereal. And here's a little mini piano that I remember you could send away for from Rocky Road. Now, if you've watched my videos, you know I'm a fan of a particular box of Lucky Charms. That was the one with the whale marshmallows from the 90s. They had this cool inflatable swirled whale that you could send away for from back in the day. I never had this thing, but I always wanted it. And speaking of Lucky Charms, they had this cool original artwork of Lucky. I assume this was just some example of animation for him in a commercial, but it was cool to flip through and see. I've never been a huge fan of Wheaties, but here's a cool frame poster showing the history of the cereal and many, if not all, the boxes that existed along the way. You like monster cereals? Well, they have plenty of stuff from that brand, including stickers, rub-ons, a booberry towel, some plastic figures, coloring book with a crayon pouch, and this cool game with Velcro balls. And boxes? Man, they had some awesome boxes, too. Here's a box of Mr. Wonderful's Surprise. This stuff came out in 1973 and was discontinued in 1975, five years before I was even born. But I've always loved seeing pictures of this box online. It was cool to see it and handle it in person. And they had many more boxes too. Circus fun. You can see this s'mores crunch box here with the s'mores for on the front and star marshmallows. Never saw one of these in person. Then sprinkle spangles, a favorite of mine. Orange blossom, the less popular version of strawberry shortcake cereal. 
You can see they had some Ralston boxes too, like Jetsons and older Cookie Crisp. General Mills acquired Ralston's archives, but they're apparently still trying to fill out that part of their collection with lots of Ralston boxes still missing. And there's Smile cereal, which was around in the 50s and 60s, and E.T., which is another one of my favorites. Here's another cereal before my time I wish I got to try, Wackies. It had banana-flavored Marbits and supposedly was like a banana version of Lucky Charms. A cool Waffleos box in pristine condition, unlike mine. Sugaroos from around 1965 with the mascots known as the Floops from Floopland. USA Olympic Crunch. And here's a really cool box, Dino Mite Cereal. Now this stuff was never actually released to the public. It featured a character that was basically J.J. Evans from Good Times, hence the name Dino Mite after his famous catchphrase. It was strawberry or chocolate flavored kicks that turn your milk strawberry or chocolate. Basically the same as Crazy Cow Cereal. Now on the same topic of rare cereals, here's some boxes of Star Cruisers and Space Cruisers. Supposedly this stuff came out around 1992 and 1993, but I've never heard of it and I've never seen pictures of it online. Maybe it was a flop because it looks like it was sweetened with NutraSweet or some fake sugar substitute, but it was still cool to see these boxes in person. Another box I'd never seen online was this peanut butter graham cereal, which looks like it was just golden grams, but instead of honey flavor, it was peanut butter. And then there was Tiny Toast, which I've also never seen pictures of. This was clearly their precursor to Cinnamon Toast Crunch. They had cinnamon flavor and also a peanut butter version. These little toast characters were cool, but I'm glad Cinnamon Toast Crunch ended up being the one that stuck. Tiny Toast just doesn't have the same ring to it. And then lastly, they were able to pull a box of Buñuelitos for me. This is a box that I've been trying for years to get my hands on. It was only released in certain regional markets in the early 90s and marketed to Spanish-speaking communities. I tried it back in the day and loved it, but I barely remember it existing and almost convinced myself that it wasn't a real thing. It was awesome to see this box again. Honestly, I think it was probably my favorite part of the archives. And here I am holding that box of Buñuelitos with Jessica and Katie, who were so generous with their time. I had such a blast there, and hopefully one day I get to go back and see even more. Okay, so that was my trip to the archives. There was so much to see. I wish I had more time. And I hope you enjoy getting to see a little behind the scenes of General Mills. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay crunchy. Siri.